Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Live from Toronto, this is IFA's Global Cafe. My name is Bruna Suertz. I'm Director of Strategy and Communications here at IFA, and it is my pleasure to host today's session. Um, just in terms of housekeeping notes, please be reminded that this session is being recorded. We're also live streaming it on our Facebook channel. Uh, recordings will be available in our website uh, in a few days after the, the session is, is finalized and you will find resources for today's session in the chat. Please make sure to also use the chat function to post any questions. Our moderator, uh, Ms. Anusha Ken, will um, either ask you to come up to the microphone or address the question to our speakers. Anusha, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Bruna. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's so nice to see everyone. As Bruna mentioned, my name is Anusha. I'm a, pro I'm a program manager at the IFA, and I'm so happy to have the pleasure to moderate today's session, which will be on developing supportive platforms to combat social isolation and improve the quality of life of older people. As we know, and as was highlighted during the pandemic, social isolation and loneliness have a serious impact on the health and well-being of older people and are a growing public health concern. So in order to respond and to influence change, supports and digital interventions are important and can contribute significantly to improving the quality of life of older people. Um, with that being said, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers who are leaders in influencing change through building supportive platforms for older people. We have with us today, Ms. Dina Hashish and Dr. Mena Shokit. Dina Hashish is the founder and managing director of the Golden Years Foundation. She is a Stanford law graduate who practiced law at international law firms in New York, Milan, and Cairo before establishing Golden Years Facebook community and the foundation. And Mena Shockett is board of trustee member in Golden Years Foundation. She's a lecturer and consultant of geriatric medicine at Enshams University. She's also a member of the Royal College of Physicians specializing in geriatric medicine and has been running a private back practice for the past 10 years. Thank you so much, Dina and Mana, for joining us today. It is a pleasure to have you, and the floor is now yours. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, good morning and good afternoon and salam, everyone. Um, so we're coming here today to talk to you about two main themes. The first theme, we don't age backwards. And because we don't age backwards, we also believe that age is just a number. So we're Dina and Minna. We're coming on behalf of Golden Years Foundation for Community Development. It's a foundation that's based on Egypt, and it was established on the back of a Facebook group that started at the height of COVID. The idea and the theme that the foundation works on is basically the awareness as to healthy aging and how we can introduce the concept of aging gracefully and creating age-friendly cities. So when we were approached by the IFA to this meetup and to talk about uh, social connectedness and digital interventions, we were delighted and we were honored because this is one of our first and favorite projects that we've done in the Golden Years Foundation. We started off, as we told, as Dina told you, as a Facebook group and that she did, and she started uh, during the COVID era because she was feeling that there are a lot of seniors being stuck at home and isolated and then they needed something to do and they needed to connect somehow loneliness was, was getting uh well, was really high during this era so this is how the found uh, the golden years facebook community started so basically what happened is that during the lockdown i realized that a lot of um in the COVID lockdown basically what happened is my generation and a lot of the younger generation ended up connecting online with their friends, with their families, and older adults were left behind. I noticed it in my family, I noticed it with friends, and it was very difficult for them to catch up. They were using social media because the social media usage in Egypt is quite high, but they were using it passively. So they were just scrolling up and down rather than being active participants in a conversation when it comes to things that they're interested in. Another personal thing that happened is that my father's health started deteriorating. Uh, he had cancer and then dementia, and we had a lot of issues going on in the home front. And with the lockdown, my father-in-law also got locked in with us, and we ended up as a house full of 
older adults all at once. And I immediately started noticing how my father's health started picking up in terms of cognitive abilities as soon as he got the stimulation that he needed when we were all around him in the house, not busy with, with, with different things. Um, and this is where the idea of uh, golden years came along as a group. Simultaneously, my mother uh, retired and I realized that she's a very, very active person who needs the active stimulation. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to try something through Facebook to create a community of only older adults. So I was encouraging my friends to invite their parents and their grandparents to the group. And the group ended up growing like that. Currently, we have 20,000.6 uh, members, so 20.6K members composed of uh, older adults, of uh, their caregivers, as well as physicians uh, who are interested in the medical field or geriatricians who are working actively in this, as well as some policymakers as well with us in the group. Uh, and the group has been growing consistently because when we for, first started off, we started off with just one idea. Uh, I don't want to come and enforce a specific agenda. I actually want to see what does the older adult population need in terms of needs and wants. And what is it that, that we can satisfy through this connectivity so that they're not as lonely and isolated in their homes amidst a lockdown? So we, due to the health restrictions and the social isolation, we had the idea of making virtual meetups or um, virtual online meetings. It started off as the wellness, health wellness series where doctors of every specialty or every inquiry that goes up on the group are, we sit down with them, have a chat, just like this one. So, and they answer questions, they say health awareness messages about vaccinations, about knee problems, about dementia, about depression, whatever, you, whatever comes up, we address it with the specialist. And then we started with an art instructor and a yoga instructor, but though we had a very big interest among the group, we started seeing that there was trouble coming up, technical trouble in particular. So she started answering and helping people online one one during the, the, the wellness series and the meetups, but it was a turmoil. She was busy on the phone all day long. She and it was it was hectic. There was a lot of problems joining the Zoom calls, posting, reporting, uh, saying what you want, posting what you want, saving documents or saving information, um, joining the meetups. It was uh, a very big problem uh, in that. And a lot of the challenges were relating to things that I think um, we, we take for granted, like copying and pasting. A lot of the problems are relating to things that during COVID we ended up getting comfortable with, like this meeting, for instance, like we're on Zoom and we're all over from people from all over the world and we're connecting and you're seeing us, you know, on a camera. So what, what we thought we want to do is to actually teach older adults how to have that kind of experience that only younger people were having and through that, they can get out of the loneliness and isolation. So we ended up having people actually looking forward to the online meetings. So they would dress up, they would put on, you know, their earrings, their necklaces, and the men would wear their nice shirts. So it gave them a reason to actually get out and do something, meaning get out on a Zoom meeting and they bring their favorite drink and we would have a conversation. And we didn't put a limit onto how long that conversation could be. So some of our meetings would last for four hours other meetings would, you know, we spend two hours. And then, of course, everyone who joins those meetings knows that we're a group of older adults, right? So they should have the patient until we were all able to connect. So with one of our, um, with one of our meetings, actually, we ended up staying for 45 minutes trying to resolve technical issues and try to, to introduce, you know, like uh, the topic. Same thing we did with yoga, same thing we did with breathing. So now we have volunteers uh, volunteering their time to give us four sessions per month uh, of yoga. Uh, we do breathing where they actually end up getting them in the moods, you know, of um, how to breathe right and how to um, smile. They teach us laughter exercises at the end so that everyone would finish the class in a good mood. Yes. And then uh, one of our amazing se uh, seniors, Maha Justi, Maha is a, is, is a... Maha is basically uh, our uh, computer science guru in this group. Yeah. So she 
whenever I have any problem, she, she was doing work in Germany and in the US relating to teaching older adults digital literacy. And she was of amazing help in terms of helping us uh, in devising a curriculum. Also, we've had Sara Nadzi, who's, and everyone is based all over. So, so she's in Germany and the US, Sara is actually in Canada. And they were helping us in devising, you know, um, a digital literacy curriculum. Yes, and, and then being the academic that I am, and so I thought that we need to do it in a statistical, scientific way, so we can get the funding and approach the board, uh, get the permission to do it. So we put out a call in the group, if you're interested in learning and improving your technical skills and digital literacy, come forward. We posted some, uh, some tools, questionnaires to assess how well you can use uh, dig uh, digital media, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, email, websites. Uh, how much do you feel that you're lonely and how much do you feel that you are connected to the society around you? We got 50 wonderful volunteers. And what, what we found in the primary data was that loneliness and social connectedness was extremely linked to how well you can use digital things, so uh, um, the digital literacy. Then uh, we Maha devised the program. The program aimed at four things mainly: um, Facebook and WhatsApp, emails, uh, how to save uh, documents, and mobile basic uh, use. So after two months of running the course, it was uh, it consisted of one-to-one -one, uh, classes, virtual and video video. Um, classes, posts on the Facebook group. We did a yeah. lot of posts on the Facebook. So just uh, for simple things. And we would we would actually, so not everyone would interact with the post because some, like due to the but way we made Facebook sure works, that the 50 we volunteers. Made sure, exactly, we let them know that this is what we're facing. This is what we're uh, testing at the moment. What are your thoughts on it? Um, we tried to test also, what is it that, that they're still struggling with? Because some of them would actually get on Zoom but they wouldn't be able to copy and paste something that they're interested in. Yeah. So, so two months running the program, statistics were booming. There was an increase in the digital literacy and the proficiency. There was a decrease in the loneliness scores. There was, the, there was an increase in the social connectedness scores. And in real life also, there was such a blossom in how they interacted friendships. And, in friendships. and friendships. Yeah, they started doing their own virtual meetups and uh, coffee drinks. Uh, they they would go out like when, when the numbers virtual. went low, actually, on uh, of COVID in Egypt, they actually some of them took each other and they went for ice cream. They, they started sending know, each other gifts and exactly, flowers. Exactly. Yeah. Like really the support they showed each other is unbelievable. We've had we've had one of our members actually telling posting a question. She was asking if uh, if we think it's a good idea. Um, like if someone went through the experience of taking a senior parent to an event, even though her mom is going to get masked and everything, because still, you know, with COVID, we need to all be careful. She was like, how do I get her out of the house? And she has a lot of health issues. And some people told her, you know, you can do this to ease it. And, and her mom had a lot of social anxiety, but it was her daughter's engagement. And it meant the world to her and her daughter to have, you know, their grandparent attend. And uh, she, she sent us a picture at the end and saying, yeah, my mom went and she had a blast. Thanks a lot. Like it put her in such a good mood for a very long time. And yeah, yeah, it was great that they had that they posted reviews and they could review things and add tips and tricks for each other on what to do. So uh, I went to this place and it was easy to go with the wheelchair. You no, know, it had a lot of stairs. You no, know, the service was not very age friendly. Uh, there was one, uh, one member that started an art and crafts workshop on her own, on the group. And then the turnout for the wellness series, the yoga classes, the breathing classes increased a lot and the engagement increased a lot. Um, they started uh, encouraging each other to do stuff. Uh, we had one member that wrote a book we exactly. published it, so, we had this book reviewing, this. The, so, uh, this book review, reviewing session for her, and they celebrated her, and we, some sent her flowers, yeah. and she then encouraged another grandmother to uh, publish her first book. So 
they talked a lot, a lot uh, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, they started their online thing and how to write a book or how to how deal to, with publishers. How to deal with like two of them actually I connected to publishers because now they have, you know, things that they want to publish and they want to know how to do that. Uh, some of them would actually post of ideas that they tried around the house that made them more comfortable, you know, like putting a pocket uh, near the, you know, like on, on the couch so that you've got everything you need once you sit so that you don't have to go back and forth. Small tips and tricks like that that make a difference. Uh, one of them basically was uh, posting about like how she actually went out of her comfort zone and she always heard from her grandchildren about, you know, like art classes and yoga classes and breathing, but she wasn't very sure if that thing is for her and she started attending regularly. Uh, some of them basically were were always wanting to volunteer at something, but they were not very sure what it is. And when the numbers went down in Egypt, what we did was we actually went and uh, started visiting nursing homes and connecting with uh, older adults in those nursing homes. But our approach was quite different. So it parties, um, it was a party. Yeah, we would, uh, we would and crafts, exactly giveaways. So this is one of the things actually we did. So one of our volunteers actually saw G for like golden years and she wrote it for us in Arabic and English. And uh, what we what we would go through is truly a party. So we would ask the nursing home, what is it that you need if we're a group Get of volunteers Get someone to sing, sing or dance or something. And the folklore, the one with the folklore. Exactly. So we did the folklore amazing. in Ramadan and we did. So like we would do things that are based on, you know, like the different events that are going on. Uh, but the whole concept is we're coming in to throw a party for you um, because we realized that truly at the end of the day, the loneliness and isolation that struggle that a lot of older adults struggle with is not at all as to whether you're aging in home or you're aging in a, in a senior home or whether you're in this country or that country or where, whether you're from this, you know, like socioeconomic class or this other socioeconomic class. Yes. It's just the loneliness and isolation is really felt by a lot of, of older adults. Yeah. And this is what we, we, what, we what we challenge ourselves with is how to take this program further, how to expand it, how to make it for the lesser educated people accessible. Um, how can we incorporate the online banking and online finances in it because this is something that the world is going to to and it's going forward into and older people are really reluctant with and they are really skeptical and they, they don't trust it that much so this is something that we want to encourage them to approach this program and this group has helped a lot of people to connect and to know new people in a very safe and healthy way and it's a very they, it, they, it got it got them out of their comfort zone without being compromised whether health wise and during the covid point. yeah or by meeting people that you can usually not meet in real life exactly exactly and one of the things that we also noticed that was very interesting is that um so we have we have some members who actually took it upon themselves that they would send us a good morning post. So every single morning, we would get a flower from one of our members every single morning. So the moment she doesn't send us this flower on the group, we worry, right? Like, how are you? And then you've had an avalanche of, of members who are expecting that flower to be sent yeah. every day. And once she didn't send us, everyone was like, OK. And then we realized she was sick. And then she was so happy that, you know, she, she uh, people are checking on, people on are her. Checking yeah. on her. Yeah. So this is the kind of thing that ended up happening, you know, from that connective uh, aspect. Um, one of the things that, of course, we're looking at is um, like combining because one of one of the strong suits that we have going on is because we started off in the virtual world, we have that going on. But how can we move a lot of our initiatives also to to create sort of a hybrid world of the, the virtual to continue, but also to do in person events where people end up connecting in in person and real life and create volunteering opportunities where older adults can add the value and the experience that you know that acquired in their lifetime to other people and share it and create those venues for them. So yeah, <laughs> so we're here if you have any questions from yeah. our end, I just glimpsed on a question about like the number of seniors in Egypt. So this is uh, so 7.4 is the official number, yeah. 7.4 million 
um, seniors in Egypt over the age of 60. So the definition in Egypt is over the age of 60. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tina and Mina, for the excellent presentation. Very thought provoking. I do invite everybody to please write your questions in the chat and then I'll call on you to ask your question. But before we jump into the discussion, I think it's important to acknowledge really how impactful and how inspirational the work you do is. You know, you started with an online Facebook community during the pandemic in order to allow older adults to feel connected and really provide services and support. You started from there and then you gathered evidence, conducted research, and now you're turning your evidence into action, which you know is going to be impactful since the since you work directly with older people and their voices guiding this action. So a huge congrats to you on that and also to the members of your community, which is 20.6K members, which is excellent. So jumping into the chat to see some questions. I see there is a question from Shmuel. So if you want to unmute yourself and ask her a question. Oh, okay. Uh, I want uh, to ask you uh, about uh, aspects uh, connection to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and uh, I want uh, to ask you if uh, today we are, uh, can uh, to say that uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the uh, different uh, changes uh, in result of uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, created uh, good uh, opportunities uh, for uh, development uh, uh, different uh, uh, platforms uh, uh, for uh, combat uh, uh, in uh, isolation and uh, lonely in in adult or the older population. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So I think the question Thank really you. is the if you think that COVID impacted um in any way the development of platforms to combat isolation and loneliness. Well, I think that just COVID just unmasked the problem. Mm -hmm. There was a problem lurking down that People are older people are lonely and they they are losing their social connections, but the COVID just unmasked it. So and it just provided us and it just obligated us to use social media and um, and platforms to connect to each other. So when this happened, we noticed that they were that the older adults were very left behind. They are they are already lonely. They have very low social connections, and also they can just meet them face-to-face -to, -face to, um, to connect. We had stranded children, or not children, older children, stranded abroad with their older adults and loved ones uh, in Egypt, stranded here so they can't me meet them, they can't visit them, they can't have their uh, grandchildren over, they can't go visit the market or their friends. So it was, it was just an unmasking or an augmentation of the actual situation. Using the, the Facebook, was just the idea, an, an idea out of the box, just to, to combat this in our uh, community. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, so Facebook was the only platform where seniors were actually in Egypt connected to. Yeah. So the idea was we didn't want to invent something that they were not using. We actually wanted to use something that they were already comfortable in as a space, and then use that to reach them and to push forward for what is the concerns that you have. You know, we had two rules at the beginning. We're not going to discuss COVID. So it was a COVID free space unless it's a doctor that's providing medical information. Because mind you, this was a time when there was no vaccine yet. So this started when we didn't know anything. Uh, when are we going to have vaccines? When are we going to have any like the How world didn't know world? anything, the world, the whole world. So it was a very scary world where we were super scared as to this is a vulnerable population and they are locked in on their own and they're getting a lot of negative influx of news and we have no idea what's happening. Right. So we said we're not going to speak about any number of death and we're not going to speak about COVID. This is a COVID free space where we just either share support for each other or fun things that just inspire positivity and inspire change in the circumstances that we're surrounded with. And this this is actually one of the things that, that kept that community thriving. 
because everyone around was sharing COVID news and we were the only group that was not really talking about COVID. It's a COVID free space completely, yeah, completely yeah. you know? So um, I hope that answers your question. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I completely agree with you that COVID, I think, just unmasked the problem that was already existing and still really continues to exist. I see that there's more questions in the chat. So I'm actually going to combine two of these questions, one's by John Peters, and then one is by Megan so the question is, in the online meetings, what was the male and female ratio of participants? And were the yoga classes done on Zoom or individually during their own time? So uh, currently, it, um, the male population in the group is around 15%, give or take, so plus or minus 2%, uh, which means that 85% is women. Uh, and it was very interesting to actually witness how men and women uh, deal with the loneliness and isolation quite differently and deal with social media quite differently. The, um, the way women would expose a problem or ask a question is very different. The way they would tackle, uh, um, like the women on the group would actually run to the rescue to talk about a problem and try to immediately, you know, like say, okay, give me your phone number, I'm gonna call you, and I'm, you know, we're gonna talk this out. Or they would just send a lot of resources. Uh, the, the men are more timid, and they would ask the question on a need to basis. So like if they have a specific issue at the moment that they wanna deal with, uh, which I think from a medical perspective yeah. also is, was very interesting when I talked to Dr. Minna about it. Like yeah, when we, yeah. It, it, it's really, really, really different how they tackle things. We have, really strong and very influential men on the group, but they just choose to very, be very, very precise and specific in what they say and what they join. So they join when they are extremely helpful. Otherwise, they are in the shadows. The women are on the, on the contrary. They're very active. They're very helpful. They give suggestions. They ask lots of questions, um, health and uh, otherwise. And otherwise, yeah. Um, they they turn up for meet for meetups much much more. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So the percentage of women in meetups is actually way more than the percentage of men. To the extent that at some point I kept contacting every single man on the group please and telling them, come join Why with could you them? please join us? You know we have those meetings. We need to know you. We want to know you. Who you <laughs> exactly. are? What you want? We've had we've had a couple of uh, very active actually men that uh, suggested a stamp collection um uh, yeah. club like a virtual club on stamp collection uh we've had a couple of men actually join us in one of our nursing home visits and they were both over 80 and uh that was fantastic because usually in those setups you would see more women in in those volunteer opportunities uh so it was phenomenal that they actually joined us and it it, it was really great so yes and we have we have two or two of the Two of the senior adults in our or in our board, they are men. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And they're very active. So like one of our members, actually one of our board of trustees in the foundation just uh, published a book Another and it's book an economics is, book. And the other and this one is just, other, opened, and just opened up his own restaurant and they're both over 70 and they're both very, very it, active. Yeah. So, uh, so we also wanted to make sure when we were established the, establishing the foundation, that different age groups are represented so like the board has members from their 30s to 70 plus and men women muslims christians and we wanted to make sure that they're from diverse backgrounds so that the you know like it's not a foundation where For it's just friends and family group, yeah. it's it's really people who challenge each other and they're all interested in the cause and they all want to pursue this further and they come from different wakes of you know like walks of life and different kind of experiences yes. as well and one of the things that we were talking about uh, that just after the summer vacation how are we going to make this male or men dominated meetups or activities or men interesting uh, things like how are we going to yeah. do things that that, that interest them to get them out of the mood yeah even if it's going to be a, just a men uh, room or a men uh, virtual meetup uh, what's going to interest them to so they can come out of their shells and join up yeah because the depression and isolation in men looks very different than in women yeah. so so we wanted to address that head on we already have a lot of activities so like the yoga for instance because i saw that as one of the questions to the yoga is mainly women joining it 
uh, we had a couple of men interested. One of them showed, the other didn't. Last minute, I think he got intimidated by the number of women attending. They all have a choice as to whether they switch on their cameras or not. It's a Zoom meeting. It's a Zoom everyone, meeting yeah. for everyone. So they have the choice as to whether they open it or not. Uh, but some are more comfortable, you know, being in a setup where the numbers are equal while others are not. So, so we also are trying to be very mindful of that to make everyone at ease and, and we tell them head on, you know, you can, you don't have to open up your camera. You don't even have to ask anything. It's just, you know, we want to, to interact together. Yeah. We also did the same for the book club. We had book clubs on the group. We had art classes. Uh, art classes were such a challenge to do online though, so they were not super successful. We tried it for several times, but it was a very challenging thing to teach art, you know, on um, online. We had also, uh, one of the things was we got a financial advisor to speak to our members about how can they make, um, and how they can protect, yeah. yeah, how can they protect their money. How to, and to invest, how to, how to make funding, exactly, how boxes, to take care of themselves yeah. for, you know, like the post retirement time. We also did the same with legal. So we had a legal advisor come in, a partner in a reputable law firm as well. That's when men joined the... Exactly, the conversation. Yeah. So more men joined in the legal, legal and, financial, and the financial yeah. aspects. And, and that was very interesting because they were not used to that kind of conversation. You know, usually the conversation about healthy aging is, is looking at things from a specific direction. But we wanted to make sure that we're giving them an overall perspective as to what it actually means to be you know, in a healthy aging environment and in an age friendly city, you know, yeah. what kind of uh, infrastructure do you need and what kind of help and support you can get. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's always so interesting to hear this and the different roles that men and women played in the group. And also um, just going off of something that you mentioned, which is the idea of men dominated meetup we also have a relevant question in the chat it's by Catherine Klein so if you can please unmute yourself and ask your question sure thank you um I've had experience working in parenting classes and the same issue emerged which is that the father spent far less time engaged in conversation and very different kinds of uh issues emerged so what they did is not make it only for men but did have a, a men only conversation class. And I happened to be working on a Saturday when they were meeting and I hung out the, by the door. So they didn't know I was there. And I was fascinated because like you experienced, they asked totally different questions, felt very differently. It was um, guided by a male uh, teacher instructor. So that's just a suggestion is to keep the integrated diverse groups going, but maybe have a, a men's only guided by one of the older men, uh, because it, it is very different. And I think they did stay. Whereas, for example, in Nepal, when we had a literacy, adult literacy program, the men dropped off out very quickly. Yeah. that's that's super interesting thank yeah. you no we'll definitely put that into consideration and and have it in place because also um one of the things that uh, that i think is worth highlighting is that because the group also has the caregivers so it was very interesting because i don't want to neglect talking about the caregivers which are basically people yeah. in you know like in their 30s 40s 50s and 60s and 70s as well because we have members who are in their 70s their parents are in their in their 90s or 100s and um, the kind of questions that they would ask are also very different. So you would see you would see the post and you would immediately know this is coming from a caregiver or from uh, or from an older adult, uh, because a lot of them are also struggling with caregiver burnout. And, and one of the missions that we have in the group is to educate and raise awareness as to what it means to have caregiver uh, burnout and that this is not a taboo, you know, like we all burnout and that doesn't mean that you don't love your parent and that doesn't mean that you don't love your grandparents that actually means that you just need a break and you need to take care of yourself so and you need to manage things differently and to manage things differently because yeah. a lot of the options they didn't even know about yeah. you know like they didn't at some point i was joking with minna that they didn't know that geriatricians exist in egypt you yeah, know when, we've been there for a very long time and they don't know that we exist yeah and this was what do you do oh i've been there for the past 10 years so yeah, yeah so the specialty itself wasn't really known 
yeah. as as when do I go to a geriatrician or what is a geriatrician or what kind of support also medical support yeah. equipment or, or how to, or, or when to and and that there is a, a, a professional caregiver that you can hire for help around the house for uh, with the with the older adults um, they didn't know and it was just such um, a cultural problem to to just Ask convince them yeah to ask for help to ask for help i think before you just burn out exactly because i feel i feel there's a lot of a lot of you know like um guilt as to you know uh oh you you don't you're complaining that you can't take care of your parents so so one of the things that we did actually is that we had to devise group rules for the facebook group and in those groups we had to stress on empathy uh, so you need to have empathy before you type up an answer, because one of the things that we were super concerned about uh, with the usage of social media, as we all know, you know, when, when we're online, trolling. is the trolling, the bullying, the cyber security issues and and how people behave sometimes in such um, an unkind way. And that's why we keep posting those rules. And we insisted that, you know, if you're not kind and if you're not putting yourself in that person's situation and just thinking without judgment as to what they're going through and how much courage it took for them to bring this issue forward and post it, then, you know, then we will give you a warning. And if you don't comply, then we're very sorry. You know, you can be on this group because this is not a space where bullying or trolling is allowed at all. So we're, we're very, very picky as to who joins um, the group in that respect. And when someone slips through the cracks, and are beginning to behave in a specific way. We're also, you know, like trying to um, give them a warning and then they're not part of that as well. Of course, we're trying now to think of how we can make sure that those guidelines are adhered to in the real world, you know, because we've been operating in cyberspace for quite a while during COVID. So, um, and this is where the mission and vision of the foundation uh, asked to help the aging and spreading that message in Egypt and across the MENA region uh, is something that we're really working yeah. on heavily at the moment. Thank you. It's always so interesting to hear stuff like, oh, like they didn't know geriatricians exist or something and really understanding that gap of knowledge. And it's interesting to kind of unpack it. And also when it comes to your Facebook community and the rules, I think, this also answers Joel's question. Thank you so much for posing the question, which was were the participants consistently well behaved? So I think really imposing those rules was a game changer and consistently reminding people of those. Um, we also have one question from Avinash. So I would ask you to please unmute yourself and ask her a question. Yeah, good morning. Um, uh, first, my congratulations to Dr. Meera and Hina for these uh, golden years. Are you getting me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm from India, but now today, uh, of course, uh, now I'm in USA. So I am early morning here also. My question is this. You see, I will just tell about my federation. Ours is not a foundation. Uh, ours is a federation of around 1 million people membership. We do have senior citizen associations. Around 5,000 senior citizen associations are there. There was no digitization. So I thought that first we should have our data. So I started that activity. And when the COVID started, the, I was on the same path what you had. You had the Facebook base. But actually, I am a little bit against of Facebook about uh, due to the cyber uh, crimes. Because our seniors are mostly, they are going their investment in the fixed deposits in the banks. And people are not that much reluctant or they are not aware about the cyber thing. So they just keep the faith on anybody, everybody or other financial advisors and immediately they disclose all their. So I am I tried to take the Zoom of 100 capacity and started this activity. Even though yoga also, I just, uh, had a yoga for almost more than a year, but I didn't get that much success. Initially, in yoga people were coming 2025 out of this so much big uh, association. And then the figure came down to only five to six. So for this, what I found that in our uh, place or in our area, there is a less network. So digital literacy was very important for uh, uh, me to take initiative to teach them about this uh, digital part, how to connect on the Zoom, 
how to make mute and mute uh, these uh, things and so in those lines <clears throat> this uh, for two years my idea was also same people were losing their social health in our area or in our india social is, health is on the top more than the physical health because they want socially they don't bother whether they are having any temperature or anything issue but they want to meet the people so likewise i thought that first we must bring socially all the people so my question is this how you got success about these people to get the digitally or virtually bring together and do the activities and how i was using zoom for only 100 how about you because facebook is good i know that and 20000 is a really good figure for 20.6 you are having it i really appreciate the efforts you put in so i fed into that activity i want him help about the digital literacy how you uh, carry out the digital literacy part can you explain about it? thank you avinash um i think it it definitely is a challenge uh, to be honest like it's not I'm also 72 years of age. I'm a, I'm I'm 72 years of age. I am a member of IFA Canada. Yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you. Nice to meet you Avinash. Yeah, thank you. So, uh so definitely the digital literacy aspect is a challenge and uh, um I, I've honestly had days when it was it was a true challenge that we have a lot of events that we want and a lot of initiatives that we've planned you know like for several several weeks and people don't our members don't end up knowing about because of the connectivity issue and because of the digital literacy issue so we would have the initiative and we would want the maximum number of people to know about it but due to the facebook algorithm and how it works and due to the fact that still there are a lot of digital literacy issues they wouldn't know that we created this event you know even though had they known they would have joined us on this zoom um so it definitely is an issue it's still not resolved uh we are trying to to try like we're trying different you know things here and there uh honestly maha and sara have been of tremendous help because maha had experience in germany trying certain things and and she would post posts you know to do certain things to do things exactly. in extreme detail she, and the high school initiative and also was we really, had, really nice yeah, yeah we also had a high really school remember. initiative to try to get seniors to help so, sorry to try to get students help to the help on the, phone, the seniors on the phone so they get them step by step to do things it it was a bit of a challenge to be honest uh, because you need to have the right type of students to help a specific kind of older adult yeah. that would accept you know that um on other cases what we did was we would just make different posts like an avalanche of posts about the thing that we want to teach them um we also left our phone numbers at some point so uh, pretty much a lot of people have my phone number yeah. and they would call me if they want something they would call the moderator so Nancy has been of tremendous help as well with us on this uh, she would walk them step by step because some of them really want to attend the thing they want to attend the event and they want the information to engage them to participate efficiently but, but the, they just don't know how to do it exactly and and teaching them you have to have the patience and the time uh, so for instance i know for a fact that uh, i actually learned for a fact after several times that if i have a meeting at 1 pm for instance i would have the line open sometimes from 12 or even 11:30 i wouldn't tell them it's open from 11:30 but i would have it open from 11:30 because some people are going to join and they would not know how to connect to audio for instance on zoom they would know how to log in if they you know if they have the app for one reason or another but they wouldn't know how to switch on the camera or connect to audio so just accounting for the time that it takes to hold the meeting i think is key as well as making sure that you reach them through everything so one of the other things that we did um in the past year as part of the learning is that uh we started sending them whatsapp messages so along with announcements WhatsApp on the facebook huge group in egypt exactly yeah, whatsapp is, is really of... widely used yeah, yeah so it's not it's not like for instance when i was in the us in the summer i realized a lot of like i went to a couple of older adults events and, and i asked if whatsapp Yeah. They, they don't use whatsapp they yeah. use email more or they don't use anything you know they would still use an sms so it really i think an investigation of the older adult community around you uh would and help, their usage yeah would, would help a lot 
devising um, a, strategy. a strategy and a plan that really fits this particular community. Exactly. Yeah. Like if they use SMS, just flood, you know, send them everything with SMS. Yeah. Don't spam them, of course, but, you know, like flood them with the information that you know that they need. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we were careful about that we would tell them when we created a WhatsApp group, we told them this is we're not going to spam you. You decide if you want to join this or not. And this is an admin only group so that we can you know let them know that that we're having this event uh, the ones that said they prefer emails we emailed them the ones that said they prefer phone calls mm -hmm. if there is time we call if not we would send them an sms but of course this is not we're still trying to figure out a way to make this more scalable because you know like having phone calls is not super scalable yeah. having whatsapp has its own limitations so we're trying to figure out what are the different ways that we can do this in a way technologically yeah. to make it scalable and increase the impact on a wider scale as well we've now we're now operating um on the facebook group so part of the facebook group it shows you insights it tells you you know who who has access so People from 24 governorates in Egypt are actually on the group with us. Uh, we have several members from the US and Canada. We have a large population also from the UAE. Uh, we have, and then we have several members, you know, like from all over, like parts of Africa and Japan, and yeah. you know. So it depends on which which parts of the world do their kids live in, or they themselves live in, and that's when the insights show uh, who's joining the group as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you, Avanash, for the question as well. I see that Helen has also posted a resource in the chat that might be useful. So thank you. And I'm going to actually jump to Megan if she would like to unmute and ask her question about um, volunteers. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. I just want to know uh, what the volunteers are expected to do with regards helping uh, the older people. Um, in, in their communities. Thank you so much, Maggie, for the question. I think this is also in relation to the digital literacy program and how their role in improving that. So uh, it really depends. So one of the very um, successful volunteer uh, projects that we had was we, so I was interviewing all these doctors, right? And we would post that on Facebook, but then um, at different times, people wouldn't see the post. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to slice those videos uh, into smaller chunks and also have our own YouTube channel so that it's more accessible yeah. and people who don't want to use Facebook, just like uh, like the previous, you know, like question uh, in terms of, uh, it, you yeah. know, like uh, of uh, Mr. Avinash uh, when he when he had his, you know, like skepticism about the platform. Um, so we wanted to have everything available on YouTube and people can share and just, you know, like share the knowledge. Um, so we divided the task into a task that older adults can do and another task that a younger computer savvy person can do. And we purely wrote, you know, this is what we need from both uh, parts of the group and whoever can participate. Call outs, yeah. And we sent call outs, exactly. Yeah, and, and we, we spread it everywhere. So yes. you shared it on your profile. I shared it even on my own personal profile and on the group itself. So this is how it functions. It's not it's not a volunteer that in the sense of you always volunteer to every project. No, we just post the project, post the call out. We need this done. Does anybody uh, know how to do it or know somebody that, that knows how, how to, do to do it? it? And then we see what turns out. Exactly. Who turns out and then we Because so far, like uh, just to put things in perspective, the foundation has just been registered last December. So we're brand new in terms of the foundation itself. Yeah. The group started up in in last uh, in the COVID lockdown. So in October of 2020, this is the first day we started inviting it because we wanted to also celebrate the seniors, you know, yeah. like the Global Seniors Day. And this is where we started the group. Uh, but in terms of volunteers, because we don't yet have the budget to hire people full time. We don't yet have the budget. We don't even yet have, have our own budget. website. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we got accepted into the Facebook Accelerator program, but you know, but that's pretty much it. We're still applying for grants and funding and working on our sustainability uh, planning as well. So um, the volunteers have been a an amazing, crucial part of this community because A, they've been donating their time. 
B, when we tell them that this is the thing that we would love to have, but we're not sure yet how to do it, people would come up with the most creative ideas. And, and the thing that really struck me the most when about this video slicing thing is that what ended up happening is that the older adult population that were volunteering for this program finished up all their tasks literally between 24 hours to 48 hours yeah and they started teaching themselves how exactly. to do the other tasks yeah and started teaching themselves how to do the other tasks while the younger generation took their time because they're busy you know like with other things so it was phenomenal how much power and and uh, and, and value yeah. and you know and experience people have and they're willing to share and give to others um does that answer your question yes thank you i'm answered thank you so much Thanks, Megan. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, that was for the discussion portion. I think before we move on to key takeaway messages and I introduce next week's session, thank you so much, Dina and Mena, for your insights. And also thank you, everyone, for your participation and asking the questions. And I think also thank you for highlighting really the role of all the members in your community and the program. And it's really wonderful to hear how diverse the community really is and how involved everyone is. So I will definitely come back to you for some key takeaway messages, but just introducing briefly what we have for next week's session. So next week, we're going to have Professor Claudia, who will be speaking about the impact of social integration on longevity and healthy aging. So I hope you all will be able to join us for next week's cafe, and we really look forward to having you there. And now back to you, Dina and Mena, for some takeaway messages. Um, thank you so much for having us. We, we truly appreciate it. Um, I think I think the key takeaway messages is that it's very important for anyone working with older adults to not come in with a specific agenda and they want to enforce because if you listen more than you just come in with that agenda, you would learn a lot. Uh, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of possibilities that could be done. When we started this project, it was very evident, you know, that the more you learn, the more you pivot and the more you absorb tailor. different and yeah. tailor the, the initiatives to actually serve better than you would have otherwise if you had come with an agenda. Also respecting the agency and autonomy of older adults. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. A lot of um, a lot of people come in with uh, with, you know, like wanting to help, but they don't stress on the agency and independence of older adults. And this is key. Uh, another thing is that there is no really the, the, the isolation and loneliness of older is adults is universal. Yeah, um, we all we all suffer the same thing. Exactly. Even though we're in different communities I and mean, we have different social class or social or education or um, social connections, we suffer uh, a lot in the same way. So we just need to highlight this and to try to tackle this in, by thinking outside the box. How can we help in a new way? Because what we were doing before is not helping anymore. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, um, the thing that I also would like to add is preemptive healthcare is way cheaper than reactive healthcare. So this is one of the things that we, we are working on. So preemptive healthcare. And, and knowledge as to how you can age successfully in a healthy way is way cheaper, more affordable, and way better for you know for the psyche and for the physical health than reactive healthcare when the you know like when things really go in a wrong way. So so this is uh, one of the reasons why we work on healthy aging. Thank you so much, Dina and Mena. Thank you again for your incredible insights, and it was great again hearing about your wonderful work. Um, and really having this conversation on developing supportive platforms to combat social isolation and to improve the quality of life of older people. I really love the focus on healthy aging and prevention and preemptive health care. And I think that it's important as we work towards implementing policy change or driving action that we involve older people. And that's exactly what you're doing. Your work is guided by older people and their participation and their voice. So thank you again for that. And thank you everyone for your participation. Apologies if I couldn't get to your question today, but we do invite you to please stay updated by accessing the resources on the IFA website. 
And just before we end today's session, I also want to give a big thank you to Bruna and Luana for supporting the session and see you next week, everyone. Thank you so much for joining.